What is up guys? We are back with another BIOS video and today I'll be showing you the BIOS on the ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming X. And since this motherboard has come out kind of late in the release cycle when it comes to Z390 motherboards, the BIOS might be actually a little bit different than other ASRock Z390 motherboards. So we're gonna go over everything and all of that. As always guys, if you do have any questions about this BIOS or where to find a setting or something like that, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. Now to start things off, we are here in easy mode and this is what your system should boot to by default. So easy mode gives you, as I like to say, like the things you need to do before you install Windows or just some things you might wanna set. So starting up here, we have our processor, you know, gives our information, our memory information, all of our DRAM information. Um, it also gives you the version of the BIOS that you're running right there as well. And you can enable or disable XMP profile easily. You can just click to auto or profile one. You can see we have our profile installed and everything and running. Down here we have our storage configuration. So this just gives you an idea of what you have installed. So you can see on our SATA 3 port, we have one drive installed and that's it. You can enable or disable RAID mode as well. Over here, we have our time and our date and everything like that. Here we have our fan status. So you can see all the fans and the actual speed in real time that they're running. And you can set, you know, your fan settings right here too. So you can go ahead and it's at standard. We can set it to performance, full speed and silent. You can just cycle through those very quickly. It's very easy to do. And under tools, you have a few different things. So we'll go through those. Um, first, you have Instant Flash, which allows you to flash your BIOS with a flash drive. You have Internet Flash, which allows you to uh, buy, flash your BIOS via the internet. And then you have Fantastic Tuning, which allows you to go ahead and tune your fans. So you have all that right here. And then over here, you have boot priority. So if we had more than one drive installed, we would actually be able to drag and drop them to set our boot priority. But since we only have one drive installed, we don't have to really worry about that. Over here, we have our CPU, motherboard temperature and voltages in real time. You can change the language if you want. Um, up here is those little icons to you know discard changes, save and exit, load defaults, and F1 will bring up help. And that you know brings you to like your just like your shortcuts and everything like that. Now, again, being in easy mode, it has what we want. It has our XMP profile. It allows us to set our boot priority and we can actually change the fan stuff too, which is kind of nice, but it's pretty much all you really need when it comes to an easy mode. Now for us, you're gonna be system tuning and things like that. We wanna to go to advanced mode. So you can either click here or just hit F6 and you can see that F6 swaps you in between. Um, so here you can see we have a Phantom Gaming skin on here, but if you're running another ASRock Z390 board, it, the menu should be kind of the same. You just might not have this, you know, Phantom Gaming skin on here. So in the main screen, it gives you all of our information again, and it goes and it gives you a My Favorites. So we don't have anything in our My Favorites, but if there's a certain setting that you use all the time, instead of having to go through maybe two or three menus to find it, you can just put it in My Favorites and easily access it. Now to do all of your system tuning, you go to OC Tweaker, and one thing I always like about ASRock BIOS is they give you your target speeds. So if you're shooting for a certain target, it's actually gonna show you up here. So, you know, you mess around in your settings and your CPU configuration, and you know, you change your core ratio. Again, see how it just changed from 36. We wanna go to 45. It's gonna show up here what our targets are. So if we're doing overclocking and we're messing with a bunch of different settings, we can see the values that we're gonna be shooting for. So we'll go ahead and switch this back and go out of here. Um, they do have an LN2 overclocking preset. Um, if you're not doing LN2, you really won't have to mess with it. We were just in CPU configuration. This is everything to do with your CPU. So again, you can set your CPU ratio. If you are doing overclocking, of course, you wanna put this on all core and then kind of go from there. But we'll, oops, we'll put this back on auto, CPU cache ratio, BCLK, everything that has to do with overclocking is here and you can go down and 
you know, change things, turn speed step off, turn turbo, turbo boost off, your long uh, duration power limits and everything are all right here. So for all of your CPU tweaking and overclocking, it's all right in this menu. DRAM configuration, again, um, they do give you a Samsung BDI type profile that you can actually enable or disable if you want. Um, and you can load your XMP in here as well. If you haven't done it on easy mode, you can go in and of course select your profile and you're pretty much good to go. You can also mess with your timings and you can you know, do all the timings that you want and everything like that. It's all right in here. And they do have, if I go up here, we can go to DRAM tweaker and this gives you your, you know, your, your JDEC tables and everything like that. Gives you all of the information on your uh, memory and you can go ahead and change things if you want. So it's cool that you have that there. Voltage configuration, again, this is everything to do with voltage. So you can set your voltage mode. By default, it's on stable mode, but you can switch it to OC mode if you want. Um, your load line calibrations here, your V core, your DRAM voltage, those are the main ones that you're gonna be wanting to change if you're overclocking. But you can, you have all of your voltages in here and everything like that. And um, also in the OC tweaker tab, you have user profiles. So you can save up to five profiles. You can load and uh, save from the disk as well. So if you have a flash drive that has a profile saved, you can go ahead and do that as well. Under advanced, again, this is everything else that's on the board, as I like to say. So CPU configuration, it's just all of the CPU settings. You have your C states, you have your active processor cores, hyper threading, you can turn all this stuff on and off. Chipset configuration, again, you can set your primary graphics adapter. So if you're using like onboard graphics, you can switch that. You have your link speeds, all the stuff that has to do you know all this you can turn your ethernet connections on and off all three of them that you actually have on this board audio on and off you know uh wireless on and off all that kind of stuff you can go ahead and turn it on and off and actually if i go back down here and see it for those who are wondering by default the uh the rgbs on the board stay on like when you turn your system off they actually stay on but here where it says rgb led you can just turn them off um, so when you turn your computer off, the RGBs actually turn off. A lot of people ask us about that. So we have that there. Storage configuration. Again, all of your, you know, your SATA controllers and you can set up your modes and, and things like that. It's all right here. Intel Thunderbolt. Uh, if you had a Thunderbolt uh, uh, controller in there, you would have your Thunderbolt support. You can turn it on or off. Super IO, ACPI. USB, there we go. It was like pause there for a second, but USB, uh, legacy USB, you can turn it on or off if you want, and you can enable or disable all of the ports on the board. And then trusted computing, there's no device found. If we had a TPM device, it would show up here and you can configure it that way. Under tools, uh, you have polychrome RGB. We can go in this really quickly. This allows you to set the RGB lighting without even having to download polychrome, polychrome sync software. You can set it what it you know what it does and everything like that. Now it doesn't give you as much control as the actual piece of software, but if you want to set it up before you install Windows, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, you EFI tech service. If you're having problems and for some odd reason you don't have a phone or something like that that has the internet where you can you know get in touch with their tech service, you can actually send them an email this way. Easy RAID installer allows you to uh, set up RAID. SSD secure erase allows you to securely erase an SSD. And then uh, you have, again, instant flash, internet flash, backup, and you can set up your network configuration so you can go ahead and use you know, the internet flash and the tech service. Hardware monitor gives us our temperatures, our fan speeds, our voltages, everything here in real time. And then you can set your fan settings and you have fantastic tuning uh, and everything like that, which we're not gonna go into because it runs a test initially. Um, but you can you know, set all of your different fan modes for all of the headers on the board and everything like that. You can do it all right in here. Under security, you can just set up a user password, a supervisor password. You can set up secure boot and everything like that. Under boot, uh, you can set your boot options, fast boot, boot from onboard LAN, things like that. Everything to do with booting is right in here. And then under exits, um, we have what I like to see is load defaults. 
uh, because sometimes you just mess things up and you just want to load everything back to the default so you have that and you do have boot override which I love to see if you don't know what boot override is it allows you to boot from a device once and then on the restart it will go through your normal boot priority so you know if we had a flash drive installed I would boot override to that install windows from that flash drive and then when the system restarts I don't have to worry about pulling that flash drive out it would just go through our normal boot priority which would be our hard drive so that is pretty much everything with this BIOS it's very straightforward uh, we go back here to easy mode and again has everything that we need I, it was weird that it kind of paused on us for a second I haven't noticed anything like very sluggish or anything like that throughout this BIOS um, it works really well it's a seasoned BIOS as well because this is Z390 we've seen this for a while now um, but if you have any questions about this bios go ahead and leave it in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video we would appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up until next time catch you guys later